welcome back everybody to chapter 10 and as usual if you missed the previous episode the link to chapter 9 can be found in the description below and i would like to thank everybody that checked out the series so far and will continue to do so i really appreciate it i've been having incredible fun editing these videos and doing this so again thank you so much we begin chapter 10 with desert treasure 1 and i've talked about iconic runescape quests throughout the series and this one is no different it invokes very similar emotions and nostalgia that Monkey Madness 1 does, right? It's a very important quest for your character, kind of a status check. Once you get access to ancient magics, you're kind of a badass. Uh, to this day, I still remember young Noxie doing this quest without a guide, early 2000s, not a very good player. Failed so many times, I died so many times, had to figure everything out myself. But when I got to the end, it just felt incredibly rewarding. And then how dope and immersive and uh, intriguing is the story? You get these four ancient warriors. They all have cool backstories that are tied to some aspects of RuneScape history. And I'm a lore guy. I'm a lore junkie. So I love that stuff. They all have a diamond of a different element that you got to get. The quest has some funny bits like the ice baby troll that hides the diamond from you, tricks you into saving its parents. It's got some annoying parts like picking the safe with the lock picks took me so long or getting to as an Adra and falling through the trap doors on like level three really annoying very dope quest man big smile on my face every time i do it the quest gave us 20k of magic experience that got us no level and again we got access to those ancient magics with the ring of visibility we could now do the curse of the empty lord mini quest and what a frustrating and infuriating experience i hated every second of this mini quest the gymnastics of trying to avoid all these bandits, all the pikers, um, while trying to have a one minute conversation with this ghost, absolutely infuriating. Couldn't do it without Thorm. He had to come in here and help me. But the quest does give you the full ghostly outfit, which is pretty cool. Uh, also, by talking to Historian Minus after, you get a 10k lamp that I put towards prayer. That got us level 52 prayer and 72 combat. The Curse of the Empty Lord is a requirement for another mini quest called the General Shadow. This one, a lot less frustrating. Um, essentially, the return of General Kazard. He tricks us into fighting Bouncer again. We do get 2k of uh, Slayer experience that got us to level 46. And the mini quest is a requirement for uh, a quest called the Secrets of the North. So really good that that's done too. Our next step was to free King Avavegi and finish recipe for disaster. Get the gloves. Uh, but in order to do that, we needed 70 cooking. So I started by cooking lobsters at the Rogue's Den until level 66 and then i switched to uh, monkfish and did that until level 70. so the whole cooking ordeal actually took me a lot longer than i thought it would it was getting late uh, into the night and i just kind of want to relax and watch a movie so i chose to do crafting we crafted ruby bracelets until level 58 and then we switched to diamond bracelets and did that until we got to level 60. Uh, and then I decided to enchant all of them. I wanted at least 66 ma magic so I can enter the Mage Guild in Yanel and finish that achievement, hard achievement. Um, but enchanting all of the ruby and diamond bracelets actually got us to level 67. So that's pretty cool. So the next morning, it was time to face the music. I went ahead and freed King of Avegi from the Colomancer spell. The subquest gave me 10k in agility and cooking, neither of which got, got me a level. And then we followed Colomancer through the portal, fought all of his minions. Most of them pretty simple for us, except the one that freezes you. That was mad annoying. Barely was able to make that uh, kill that one. And then we fought Colomancer himself, killed him pretty, pretty easily as well, and finished the quest. Now, the quest gives us a 20k lamp that I put towards agility, but got no level. Uh, but most importantly, we got the Barrow's Gloves, which is what we wanted. Right after Recipe for Disaster, we actually joined a clan called X-Grace. It's a clan that my brother Thorm has been a part of for a while. It's a very good group of people, very helpful. Um, ranges from beginner players to endgame content players. And there are many benefits of joining a clan. You make new friends to play with. Um, you get access to some group content, for example, Barbarian Assault or Raids that are just easier to do with, with a clan. And then, for example, our clan does giveaways through Discord, um, money or tokens for membership. Uh, they do drop parties, right? So lots of benefits of joining a clan. And in the prologue, I talked about that uh, I treat this character kind of as a quasi Iron Man. 
in the sense that I'm not going to accept money from any of my friends. Um, I'm going to do everything on the account myself. Now, I decided to actually make an exception for clan events. If there is an item that drops in the drop party, I will sell it for money. Or if I win a 5 million or a 10 million giveaway that we often do in Discord, I will take that money. Mainly so that I can portray to you guys the benefits of having a social and active clan. Because I think it's important in, in gaming. I have the same thing in WoW. And, and this just makes gaming so much better. Next, we trained up our fletching by cutting a willow longbows. Mainly so that it's higher than our construction because we were about to do Tears of Gothics minigame and I didn't want that experience to be wasted on an easy skill like fletching. Uh, we got it to level 50 and then we went ahead and completed all the remaining medium achievements we had in Kandarin. Um, another reason why I trained fletching. Except Barbarian Assault. We joined a clan so that we could do Barbarian Assault but we'll leave that for a later video. And then we went ahead and completed the Tears of Gothics mini quest. That gave us enough experience to get us to 41 construction. And then we returned to Slayer. We finished up the troll assignment that you guys saw in the previous episode. 139 trolls total for 12.5k experience in Slayer. Our next task from Keldar was 124 lesser demons, which we killed in the Traveler Dungeon. That gave us almost 10k of Slayer experience. And then our third task from Keldar was Pyre Fiends, 113 of them. That gave us 5k of Slayer experience. All three of those tasks gave us 60 strength and then up to 48 Slayer. So for day three of RuneScape in this chapter, we decided to knock out as many achievements as we could. We started with the easy achievements and the medium achievements in the Fremnic region. We completed all of those. Both lamps we put towards runecrafting that got us to level 45. Then we knocked out all the easy achievements in the Karamja jungle and all the medium ones that we could. The only one we couldn't do was to catch a Karam one, which is 65 fishing. And I think it's a bit ludicrous that you have a medium achievement that requires that high of a fishing level. Let's just be honest. There's a lot of hard achievements that require much less. So kind of weird. Uh, and then we knocked out all the leftover medium achievements that we still had to do in the corn region. That 7.5k lamp we put towards runecrafting and got to level 46. So the next achievements that we completed were all the easy ones in the wilderness. The lamp we put towards runecrafting but got no level. And all the medium ones that we could. There were a couple that we couldn't do because of a missing woodcutting level and the slayer level. So we'll get to those eventually. But this is a good place for us to do another episode of Real Talk with Noxie, and this one is very polarizing. It is my opinion, so I'm going to state that up front. I started a very heated discussion about this in our clan chat, so be warned. But I absolutely despise and viscerally hate the wilderness. I wish it did not exist in this game. I get annoyed to no end when games force PvE players like myself who are not good enough to do PvP or don't care to. Like, I, PvP does not interest me one bit. That's not why I play RuneScape. Yet, you still force me to go into predominantly PvP areas to get gear or to accomplish tasks that are directly necessary for PvE progression. It just annoys me to no end. Like, why is Major Arena 1 in level 50 Wilderness? I, I don't understand. Why do I have to round around level 37 Wilderness with a bronze pickaxe to accomplish an easy achievement. I got piked six times while doing all this. It took me two and a half hours, and each time I got piked, I like get got more infuriated to a point where I wanted to smash my keyboard because I'm running around with nothing, nothing on me. You're gonna get bones in a bronze pickaxe at best if you pike me. So why the flip are you wasting my time? There was a dude when I was doing Major Arena one that was camping the 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 lever teleport saw that i have nothing hiked me and then follow me when i hop worlds until i turn off that little setting thing like why do i have to go through these gymnastics dude like it annoys me to no end keep the two worlds separate if you want to do pvp then go to pvp with all your friends that do pvp make an area for them if that's the wilderness great keep it that way just don't force me a pve player to have to go there to get items for how i play the game absolutely despise the wilderness and i know that runescape's done things to help us out like the ferox enclave the teleport system a level 30 teleport now um lots of things that they put in the wilderness to help us out but still man like 
Speaking of Major Arena 1, we completed that and then grinded out all the kills on the Gothic spell, the Zamrock spell, and the Ceredolmen spell so we can open those up as well as get all the capes. So we now have an entire pretty set of staffs and capes. Mentally exhausted from all the shenanigans in the wilderness, I decided to do a Slayer assignment kind of as a reset. We completed my task of 142 blue dragons that gave us 15k of slayer experience to level 50 we also got 55 range and then the 142 dragon bones that we got from that task we sacrificed at a house altar that got us to 54 prayer as well next i completed all the easy and the medium achievements that i could in mauritania and this included knocking out the lair of tarn razor lore uh, mini quest for 5k of slayer experience but more importantly the tome that boosts our self amulet to enchanted that gives 20 percent increase in strength and accuracy towards undead creatures very important um the two lamps that we got as a reward for both the easy and the medium achievements we put towards um, rune crafting and got that to level 48 Next, we started high alching all the willow longbows that we fleshed earlier until we got to level 68 magic. And then Thorim correctly pointed out I should probably be stringing the bows to train my fletching. So I switched to that and trained our fletching to level 55. And the last thing for this chapter was to complete all the easy achievements and the medium achievements in the Western provinces. Um, this included the 125 chompy bird kills needed for the medium achievement. I actually kept going until I got 300 kills for the hard achievement. And I was going to go for a thousand kills to get that elite one done. But Thorim talked me out of it, uh, luckily, because uh, it was insane. Um, this also closes a loop on this achievement grind. All easy achievements are now done. And most of the medium ones are done too, with the exception of a few tasks in each area that require some level bumps. So we'll get after those, but I'm very happy that this grind is over. The Western provinces gave us two lamps, 10K total that we put towards room crafting that got us to level 49. So to close things out for the day, we ended up doing 27 farm runs three of which were both herbs and trees. We started doing papayas and willows, really good experience. We got 11 farming levels. And then we also did 27 birdhouse runs that got us five levels in Hunter. As far as the progress check, I decided to try something different and include both the previous episode and the uh, current episode total so that you guys can visually see the difference. Let me know if that is a good thing and I'll keep doing it. We went from 1210 to 1309. So 99 uh, total level increase, kind of ironic, but very good progress on the character for today. As far as teaser for the next video, I'll leave you guys with this. We are going to get some significant armor upgrades, specifically in the chest slot and in the offhand slot. So stay tuned to see exactly how we did that. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.